doubter by nature. You know, I mean, one of those people who just asks a lot of questions, points out flaws in reasoning, maybe depends a lot of, on logic and, and reason, and just plain does a lot of thinking before you buy into something or accept it. Have you ever been called a doubting Thomas? You know, I kind of think poor old Thomas got a bad rap. I mean, the nickname is not very complimentary. And often we hear Thomas criticized for his just his lack of faith. So for those of you who aren't all that familiar with the story in the Bible, it happened just after Jesus had risen from the dead. He'd appeared, first of all, to Mary Magdalene and then to Peter and John. And then finally, to a group of, of disciples all, in, all together. But Thomas, who was one of the disciples, wasn't there. He missed seeing the risen Jesus. And when he heard about it, he just didn't believe it. <laughs> now, I'm sure that probably everyone had their questions over this. You know, it's just not everyone. Every, every day that someone rises from the dead. You know, like, questions like, was that really Jesus? Could it have been, I don't know, an imposter? Was it a ghost? But Thomas had more than questions. He just flat out didn't believe the other disciples when they told him that they'd seen the Lord. <laughs> the only way Thomas was going to be convinced, and I quote, is if I see the nail marks in his hands, and I can put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into that wound in his side. You can read that in John 20, verse 25, he says that. See, Thomas, he had to see to believe. Oh, shocking, right? What a loser of a disciple. Jesus would have been so disappointed, right? In fact, I mean, that could be enough to get him kicked out of the twelve. Well, actually, no. Because eight days later, the disciples were all together again, and this time Thomas was with them. And suddenly, Jesus was right there in the locked room. And the first thing he did after he would greeted them all was turn to Thomas and kind of take a step towards him and hold out his hands towards him and say, come on, Thomas, come and put your finger here, right in that raw, these raw, fresh nail holes. Come, put your hand right in this, this fresh wound in my side. Put your hand there, touch it. Jesus didn't rebuke him or, or shun him or shame him in front of the others. I kind of think Jesus was sort of saying, I know about your doubts, Thomas, you know, your questions, and I understand, I get it. I mean, after all, it was me who made you the thinker, you know, the man of reason and logic that you are. I made you pragmatic and, and this fact-based guy. Yeah, so let me remove all doubt Right here and now, Thomas, put your finger in the holes. Touch the evidence. And, and what I see here is so encouraging to me because God is not thrown off by my doubts and my questions. He doesn't cancel my salvation, you know, when, when they arise, when that happens. He's Jesus is not disappointed when a follower of his or, or someone who is seeking the truth about him struggles with doubts. I kind of think he just takes a step closer and holds out the evidence. Here, here's the evidence. He, pro he just provides the absolute certain proof that they need right then and was Thomas convinced, oh yeah, 
his response was, my Lord and my God. It was really Jesus, and he believed it. And I just want to encourage you today I just want you to know that at times when you struggle with doubts about your faith, and I think it comes, those times come for every follower of Jesus. You know, doubts about this God, this Savior that we love and live for and serve. When those times happen, those doubts come. Don't shy away from them. Don't pretend they're not there. Don't try to stuff them all down and ignore them. Acknowledge them. Face them honestly so that Jesus can dispel them with the evidence. You know, I think that doubt can actually lead us to greater trust because of how God just so graciously meets us in our moments of greatest doubt and removes it with the evidence. So lean into your doubt. You know, direct it honestly towards Jesus. Because our God, who defeated death, can surely handle our doubts and questions when they arise. God bless you.